everybody. I'm Diane. I'm an enrolled agent with Grassroots Taxes, and I talk about all things tax, finance, and small business. And today we're going to talk about the end of the year for your small business. It is the end of December here, and we're going to talk about things you need to do to end your 2023. So, number one, we should really talk about have you made any money and have you paid any taxes in? If you haven't paid any taxes in all year, it would be wise to make an estimated payment on your personal taxes by January 15th. I really hope you have some money set aside to pay your taxes. If you do, please make an estimated payment by January 15th. Do not wait until April 15th to pay all your taxes. You can get fined for not paying in throughout the year. If you are not paying in regularly on a salary, you probably should make an estimated payment by January 15th. Number two, 1099s. I can't say this enough times. 1099s to your workers. If you have 1099 employees, people that work for you that are not your employees, okay? 1099 workers, the 1099s are due to the workers by January 31st. They are due to the federal government by January 31st. They're not just nice memos to your employees. They have to be electronically transmitted to the IRS. They are due January 31st. So you need to start getting together your numbers and making sure you have everybody's social security numbers, addresses updated, and everything else uh, so you can get that sent in. Uh, now is the time to make sure you have everybody's social security numbers. Okay, number three, you need to take inventory if you sell products. If you are selling products, which includes food and beverage, if you are selling products, you should take an inventory of your products at the end of the year. Do I have a blog post for this? Yes. Yes, I do. Is there a free form on the blog post that you can download? Yes. Yes, there is. So please take inventory before the end of the year or right around the end of the year if you have products that you are selling, including food and beverage and alcohol. Number four, mileage on your personal vehicle. Mileage, mileage, mileage it is some people's biggest deduction. If you are driving to Lowe's, if you are driving to Sam's, if you are constantly going and picking things up, yes, your mileage. So yes, take the mileage on your vehicle. Take a picture of your odometer. If you do that every year, you have proof of your actual vehicle miles. And then go back and start figuring out, making sure you've kept a log all year of your mileage. And if you haven't done that all year, hmm, when would be a good time to start now? Okay, you can do this. Uh, there's lots of apps out there. If you're not using a mileage app, now would be the time to start installing one on your phone and start doing it now. Okay, number five, bookkeeping. Let's be honest. Some people are really good at it. Some people are not. If you're one of those people who are not, do not be ashamed. Do not try and cram and try and get all your numbers yet. Just please ask for help. Get yourself a bookkeeper. If you cannot keep up with the bookkeeping, if you're eight months behind, get somebody to help you. Get some advice. I can't stress that enough. Get your bookkeeping together. You need to be on top of how much money you're making. Okay? You need to know how much money you're making. Number six, franchise tax. If you are an LLC, if you are a corporation, if you are a nonprofit, your franchise tax or annual report was due, oh no, back in May. If you have not filed it by the end of the year, you will be revoked come January 1st. So go back, log into your Secretary of State. This is for my Arkansas people specifically on the revoked, or states that have franchise tax, of which there's only like 20 some now that have franchise tax. But if you're in Arkansas, Definitely log into the Arkansas Secretary of State, plug in your name, make sure it says good standing. And if it says anything but good standing, you probably didn't pay your franchise tax back in May. Get that done before the end of the year. If you apply for loans or financing or government loans or grants, uh, if you're not in good standing, they will just laugh at you. You need to keep up with that stuff. Okay, number seven, labor posters. I am sure you have gotten a ton of junk mail telling you you need to spend $80 on labor posters. You do not. Do you need to have labor posters? 
Yes, you do. But they're free. Go to your state's Department of Labor and plug in labor posters and they will tell you every poster that you are required to have for your employees. It is information that needs to be posted, like how to get unemployment, how to claim workers' comp, what minimum wage is. They need to be notified of all this stuff. Uh, it's the law. So download your labor posters and hang them up somewhere where your employees can see them. Number eight, annual meeting. I know, but Diane, Arkansas changed it and most states don't make you have an annual meeting. I don't even need this. I don't need anything. There's default, right? If you want to treat your business separately from a person, if you, from your personal Right? So if you want to be separate from your business, if you want to have that limited liability, you cannot pierce the corporate veil. The more you treat your business like a business, the more you pretend you're Walmart and not mom and pop shop. Okay. The more you treat your business like a business. So have an annual meeting, write it down, treat your business like a business. You will look when bad things happen, when you get sued, when you get audited by the IRS, you will look so much more official, like you're actually treating it like a business, they will respect you way more. Number nine, 1099K forms. You probably got some of these for processing credit cards. This year, I strongly advise we report them separately from your income. They're gonna want it that way next year, I think, unless they change the laws. This is a good practice year. Get all those 1099Ks for your payment processors and let's add them up and report them separately as, you know, separately from the sales. Take out the tips, take out the stuff. It's a really complicated process, but get those 1099K forms and let's start reporting them correctly. Okay? New stuff on my blog. Oh my gosh. I am going to have so much more stuff on my blog. I've got a new website. So read my blog, grassrootstaxes.com. Also, Follow me on social media. You know how to do all this stuff. Remember, like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, okay? Should have new videos coming out every week for the next couple months, I hope. And I hope to see you in 2024 at tax time.